Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Formex Essence 39. This watch is available from formexwatch.com for €1,450. So firstly, let's look at the box that the watch comes in, and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with a piece. So the watch comes in a solid wooden watch box, which is protected by this matte black outer box. One removes the lid, pulls down the flap, and I'll show you the watch box itself. Solid wooden watch box, matte black, as you can see, hinge lid. Good attention to detail, because the base has a felt panel, and that means it's not going to slide about on a desktop, and also it's not going to scuff and scratch a lacquered or high-polished desktop or tabletop. The interior is very well executed, fully upholstered with a grey velour fabric to a good standard and the watch sits in the base on a padded pillow cushion which is also grey velour fabric upholstered to a good standard. So good presentation and immediately one gets the impression the Essence 39 is a high quality Swiss made piece. With regards to the items, this is the owner's instruction manual, clear concise diagrams, the instructions are in English and it details the operation of the movement use which is the Salita SW200-1 automatic. In the last page of the owner's manual, we have a certificate of authenticity and international warranty card. Now, the thing I like about the Essence 39, and Formex deserve full credit for this, usually at this price point within the mid-tier, €1,450, one would expect a one- or two-year international warranty, but the Essence 39 comes with a three-year international warranty, which is very impressive. And lastly, one also gets this 1.6mm flathead jeweler screwdriver for resizing the screw pins in the bracelet links. So, with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the Formex Essence 39. We have a 39mm case diameter, we have a 45.6mm lug-to-lug -lug measurement, a thickness of 10.3mm and a lug width of 20mm. The bracelet tapers from 20mm at the lugs down to 18mm at the two button push deployment clasp. The deployment is signed to high standard with the Formex emblem engraved. Nice foam resistance to the two button push triggers. Both halves of the deployment open with a nice positive click. Flawless brass satin finishing to the top side, underside and flanks of the deployment. This is high grade finishing. The hinge pins are a good tight interface fit with no play and they articulate very smoothly. So the quality of the finishing, the build quality and quality control of this deployment is some of the best I've seen. No sharp edges to the flanks and it really is beautiful, beautiful luster to the 316L grade stainless steel. Now it is handed, one has to close the right hand portion first because the left hand portion overlaps and sits on top of it but the two button push triggers make the deployment open very smoothly. Now there's a patented micro adjustment system. In, to the left of the deployment the end link has a built in micro adjustment which allows for 5mm of on the fly adjustment and it deploys very easily as you can see and there are two ball bearings built into the left hand links and the clasp snaps back in with the friction of the two ball bearings which are spring loaded against it so it deploys very easily and this is a unique micro adjustment system which is patented by Formex I haven't seen other brands use this on a deployment to give five millimeters of on the fly adjustment I like the way it snaps in with a nice smooth click so very well executed clasp very well executed deployment and good to have the on the fly adjustment which is something that's Often deployment clasps, they lack micro adjustment and it's good that Formex have got over that problem as you can see. With regards to the rest of the specification, we have a flat sapphire crystal with clear AR coating and the clear anti-reflective coating does an excellent job of reducing the glare and the highly reflective nature of the applied indices and the silver mirror polished hands which are anodized as you can see they have a black or gray finish to the anodizing to the indices and also the hands the hands are baton shaped but they're also tapered and they are very well finished correctly proportioned the second hand extends all the way to the minute ticks on the chaptering the horizontal lines in the matte white dial are cnc milled and they are milled to perfection. If you look at the finishing to the dial, this is the kind of dial finishing one would expect to see on a high tier piece costing in excess of 10,000 euro. And bear in mind, this is a mid tier piece costing 1,450. Formex deserve full credit. Very nice attention to detail because there's a keystone shape to the dates complication. They haven't made it rectangular and they've also scalloped. If you look either side of the date window, you can see they have recessed it or scalloped it and therefore that removes the shadow. Often with a white states wheel with black Arabic numerals, 
the thick dial creates a shadow around the date complication. If you look at the dates, you can see it doesn't have that characteristic shadow because they've recessed it or scalloped it either side of the date. And that means that removes the step of the dial being thick and it reduces the shadow. So therefore the legibility on the date window is improved. Very nice attention to detail, a nice keystone shape to it rather than being just a rectangle. So very good symmetry to the dial, legibility is good, and I like the fact it's not overbranded with necessary text or specification. We simply have the Formex emblem applied, Formex logo, and then Essence chronometer at the 6 o'clock position, because this is a COSC certified chronometer piece. Now one detail I like about Formex watches is the case suspension system. So since 1999, when Formex started, they designed this patented system. The case actually articulates, as you can see. It moves up and down. There are four springs, like shock absorbers, in each of the corners. And as you can see, we have the he these hex screws, and there is a spring in each of these positions. And this spring-loaded action allows the case suspension system to articulate. It can actually move up and down on the four springs, like having four shock absorbers in each corner of the case. Now the purpose of the case suspension system, there are two purposes. One is that it isolates the movement from shock damage. So for example, if you impact the watch, it prevents the shock damage traveling into the movement and damaging it. The other reason is that it allows the case back to move against the wrist. So therefore, when, when the wrist expands, it means the actual movement and the inner case can articulate in the outer case, and that means it allows for some movement against the wrist. So it makes very comfortable wear because the case is constantly articulating, constantly floating within the outer case due to the case suspension system. And it is a very good shock resistance system as well with the four spring-loaded shock absorbers in each corner. Right, so I'll show you the case back. Screw down exhibition case back, glazed with sapphire crystal, and it does an outstanding job of displaying the movement used, which is the Salita SW200-1 chronometer grade, which is COSC certified. Beautiful decoration to the chronometer grade SW200-1, pelage finishing to the bridges, blued screws, skeletonized rotor, which is signed, and it's just absolutely gorgeous to look at, the pelage finishing on the bridges. This is the top grade of Salita SW200-1. To put this into perspective, there are four grades of SW200-1. Standard, Elabor, Top and Chronometer. Chronometer is the very best because it is COSC certified as a chronometer. And the decoration on the chronometer grade is the highest because we have pelage finishing, blued screws. Just absolutely gorgeous to look at through the sapphire glazed exhibition case back. These solid end links are a good tight fit to the head of the piece and again the attention to detail is high tier level. If you look at the quick release end links you can see they have milled slots in these solid end links and the bracelet is attached to the solid end links by two flat head screws and they're very well engineered because you can see they haven't just used a quick release spring bar which would be a cost cutting measure. They have actually built the quick releases into the milled slots, as you can see. No sharp edges, no burrs, and the quick releases on the end links work very well on both sides to the head of the piece. So these are very well engineered uh, quick release end links, and I think that they deserve credit for not cutting any corners with regards to the finishing. It's the kind of build quality one would expect to see on a high tier piece. With regards to the crown, it's a push-pull crown. Now that may come as a surprise to you, and I'm going to be critical of this. I appreciate this is a daily wear piece, not a dive piece. 100 meters is perfectly acceptable, and yes, a push-pull crown does provide 100 meters of hermetic seal, which is acceptable. But I personally would prefer to see a screw-down crown used rather than a push-pull crown. A push-pull crown is a cost-cutting measure because they're less expensive to produce than a screw-down crown. So let's test the push pull crown execution. It's knurled, solid 316L grade stainless steel and engraved and signed with the for, uh, Formex emblem to a good standard. So in the close position, as it's a push pull crown, one can manually wind the Salita Calibre SW200-1 to top it up to its maximum 40 hour power reserve. Feels smooth, one can feel the tension in the mainspring gradually building up. Absolute pleasure to manually wind the SW200-1. Now, early versions of the SW200-1 had a weakness. 
The ratchet wheel had weak teeth, and when manually winding the early versions of the SW200-1, sometimes the teeth would strip off the ratchet wheel, and therefore the movement would fail. But, however, Salita quickly rectified this defect and they made the ratchet wheels from harder steel and therefore the teeth no longer strip off. So there's no longer that problem with current 200-1s. The ratchet wheel teeth are stronger because the steel they're using is harder. So no problems manually winding it. Feels exactly the same as the ETA 2824-2. The SW200-1 is of course a clone of the 2824-2. They just add an extra jewel to it but the architecture of both movements is identical. Putting it out to the first click position is the quick set date complication. And if you look closely at the date wheel at six o'clock, you can see the quick set complication clicks over the nice positive click. No discernible difference between the 2824-2 and the 200-1. They have the exact same sensation. The date complication clicks over with a nice light clicking mechanism. Absolute pleasure to set the date. Pulling it out to the second click position is the time setting position and that hacks the movement. If you look closely at the second hand you can see I've now hacked it. So it's possible to set the time precisely to the second. Nice light resistance to the 200-1. No back play clockwise and anti-clockwise. There's an immediate response between the rotation of the crown and the minute hand moving. So I like the smooth feeling when setting the time on the 200-1. Very smooth movement. Pushing it back in, it's got a nice positive click and that restarts the movement. The second hand begins to sweep around the dial once again. And as it's a push-pull crown, there's no need to screw it back down. Pushing it back in, starts the movement and also reinstates the 100 meters of hermetic seal. Right, so I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my eight inch wrist. Now I haven't sized the bracelet and I'm pleased to report that this fits my eight inch wrist perfectly. Now, one thing I like about Formex watches such as this Essence 39 is on their website formexwatch.com one can actually specify the length of bracelet your wrist size in centimeters or alternatively inches and they will actually make the bracelet to fit your wrist rather like a bespoke bracelet so this one is the standard length and it does actually fit a maximum of eight inches with the micro adjustment deployed as you can see I can just fit my index finger underneath the bracelet and clasp so this is something to note, the standard bracelets will fit up to an 8 inch wrist but they can actually make the bracelets longer so you can actually specify the exact wrist measurement, wrist measurement you want in centimetres or inches and they will add enough links to perfectly fit your wrist. Now with regards to the case suspension system, if you look closely to the head of the piece, I'll show you how it operates. If I flex my wrist as you can see, the inner case floats inside the outer case with the four springs in the corners with the case suspension system. So it makes for a very comfortable wearing experience because it's got this spring-loaded action. The wrist presses against the sapphire crystal in the exhibition case back and as you can see the inner case actually floats. It's spring-loaded suspended inside the outer case. So when the wrist expands and contracts throughout the day, when one is active, or for example if you're playing sports and your wrist swells up, the inner case can actually move away from the, the outer case. As you can see there's that spring-loaded action and it's very smooth. It feels very comfortable. There doesn't feel any pressure against the case back. One doesn't need to adjust the micro adjustment. Alternatively one can deploy the micro adjustment and that gives five millimeters of extension. So very good system, shock resistance uh, protection to the movement and also articulation. And it's a very well proven reliable case suspension system because Formex have been using this patented system since 1999. So in 2022 at this stage it is well proven, works very well. Right so let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to the absolute maximum. So as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to the absolute peak. Right, so that's now fully charged, and as you can see, the watch clearly uses BGW9 Super Luminova. Now, I appreciate there is some difficulty with this because it uses baton hands, which are tapered, and also baton applied indices. So the problem with baton hands and baton indices is they don't allow for very large plots, very large area of BGW9 to be applied. I think, however, Forbex could improve upon this. 
Yes, the BGW9 is glowing brightly and it will continue to glow for a good length of time. And there's a good colour tone match between the BGW9 on the applied indices and the bat on hands. But I would like to see more layers of BGW9 applied. For example, I would like to see them increase to five to six layers and deepen the indices to allow for deeper plots of BGW9. Because as you can see, the performance is good, but I have seen better with um, BGW9 Superluminova. So... I think it's acceptable. If they scaled up the proportion of the bat on hands and scaled up the proportion of the indices and made them larger and deeper, they could apply more layers of BGW line. It is good quality, but I just think I have seen better performance, and I think at this price point one would expect to see exceptional BGW9 Supreme Nova. Right, so let's discuss the movement use because it's one of my favourite aspects of the piece. So this uses the Solita SW200-1 chronometer grade. So as I've detailed, there are four grades of SW200-1. Standard, Elabor, Top and Chronometer. Chronometer is the very best available because it is COSC certified. The movement is regulated in five positions to COSC chronometer limits, which are minus four to plus six seconds per day. Formex are well regulating the SW200-1 chronometer grade movements they're using. This one is running consistently at plus two seconds per day, which is outstanding accuracy and well within the minus four to plus six COSC chronometer limits. Now, as this is chronometer grade, the top grade of SW200-1, as I've detailed, it has pelage finishing to the bridges, blued screws, and also the rotor is skeletonized and signed, as you can see. So this is the top grade Solita SW200-1. Chronometer grade is actually above top grade because it is regulated in five positions and certified by COSC to be within the, their chronometer limits of minus four to plus six. And I want to give due credit to Formex because they could have used the cost cutting measure of using a standard grade or a lab or grade SW200-1, but they didn't. They used the very best Solita SW200-1, which is chronometer grade, and it is cost certified, which is obviously more expensive for Formex, Formex to procure. So very good movements. I think it's beautifully decorated, and I love the pelage finishing and the blued screws, and also the skeletonized rotor adds interest to it. And it is the correct choice for this piece. At 1,450 to get a cost chronometer grade SW200-1 is the correct movement. The screw down exhibition case back is very well finished, engraved to a good standard. The screws are very well machined. The milled slots are very well machined. And it is very low profile, bearing in mind that this is an automatic, not a manual wind or quartz power piece. It's the kind of thickness to a 100 meter case back one would expect to see with a 50 meter water resistance, or alternatively a quartz powered piece, very flat, very low profile, and, snit and fits very snug to the wrist. Nice undercut to the flanks. And the benefit of using such a flat, low profile case back is this piece is only 10.3 millimeters thick. So I'll give you another wrist shot and I'll just show you this in detail because it's something I really like about the Essence 39 in particular, the fact it's so low profile. Usually with an automatic piece, because of the rotor on the underside of the movement, one would expect the head of the piece to be 12 or 13 millimetres. But this has a very snug fit to the wrist. If you can see, there is no gap underneath the tips of the lugs. And although this uses male end links rather than female pivoted end links, the male end links do articulate very well. The end link in the bracelet pulls very snugly to the wrist. So nice angular profile, as you can see. So very snug fit to the wrist. 10.3 really is the kind of fit one would expect with a quartz powered piece. To get this with an automatic, uh, an SW200-1 powered piece is very impressive. So it feels very well balanced on wrist, 137 grams, which is very good. Anything below 150 gives a nice feeling of heft and quality, but also very comfortable. It doesn't feel top heavy. However, I'm going to be critical of the taper. 20 down to 18, I think is too straight. It would look better had they used the industry standard 20 down to 16 taper. 22 to 18 is the industry standard or alternatively 20 to 16. 20 to 18 is more straight and parallel and I think it would be better balanced if they'd used 20 to 16. But however, this is subjective. Some collectors might like the thickness around the deployment end of the clasp. Beautiful luster to the bracelet and it's just finished to perfection. This is the kind of finishing one would expect to see on a high tier piece costing in excess of 10,000 euro, not on a mid tier piece costing 1,450. 
The horizontal milled lines in the matte white dial are just finished to perfection. And I like the fact the indices and the baton hands are grey anodized, as you can see, or black anodized. You can see that that reduces their reflection and therefore the legibility is enhanced and the clear AR coating also works very well. So feel good factor is good, comfort level is good, proportions to the head of the piece are good. 39mm by 456 I think this is clearly best suited to collectors with a smaller wrist of 6 to 7 inches at 456 because 48mm is the sweet spot. If you have a larger wrist of 7 to 8 inches, I think the Essence 43 would be a better option. But for a 6 to 7 inch wrist, the 39 is the correct size. So comfort level good, feel good factor is good, and it feels very well balanced. So last I'll summarise the piece, what do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the watch should meet two criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. Really, to evaluate this piece, one needs to study the quality of the finishing to the bezel, the head of the piece, and the case back, and also the bracelet. I'm going to put this into perspective. The quality to the finishing to the head of the piece and the bracelet is high tier level. This is the kind of finishing one would expect to see on a piece costing €10,000, not a mid-tier piece costing 1450 Every single link of this bracelet is finished to perfection. It articulates very smoothly, no stiff links, the bracelet doesn't kink, and there's no additional play in the screw pins. It's a very tight, well-executed bracelet, very well engineered, no sharp edges to the flanks. Beautiful chamfers and bevels to every facet of the links, as you can see. Flawless mirror polishing to the bevels. The brush satin finishing has a beautiful luster to it. I think they could have further enhanced the fit if they'd used female pivoted end links, but however, it does have a short lug to lug measurement of only 45.6 versus 48, which is perfection. But I think female pivoted end links would have been a better fit. But having said that, the end link in the bracelet articulates very smoothly. In terms of smoothness, this feels as good as a Rolex Oyster bracelet, alternatively, the bracelet on my Tudor Black Bay 58. That is the smoothness of the articulation. So the bracelet is 10 out of 10. Micro adjustment is excellent. Now, there is one other thing that I want to bring to your attention. And it's something I haven't seen on other watches. The only other brand that I've seen do this is Tudor. Now, if you look closely at the bracelet, if you look at the deployment very closely, you can see the ball bearings are white because they're not made from stainless steel. They are ceramic ball bearings. Tudor are the only other brand I have seen use ceramic ball bearings. And the benefit of using ceramic versus stainless steel is ceramic is, of course, harder than stainless steel, and therefore the ball bearings aren't going to wear down in time. So in 10 or 20 years, this deployment is still going to snap shut with the same positive click because the ceramic ball bearings aren't going to have worn down as per stainless steel ball bearings used by so many other brands. And this really is very good. It's strong specification to see ceramic ball bearings used versus stainless steel ball bearings. And they really do give a sublime action because the ceramic makes the clasp snap shut with a nice positive click. And again, this is the kind of detail one would expect with a high tier piece costing in excess of €10,000. Ceramic ball bearings used by Tudor, for example, uh, which is a more expensive piece. The Black Bay 58 and the Black Bay Heritage are, of course, more expensive pieces. But they're doing this at €1,450, which is very impressive. So, Excellent quality finishing to the head of the piece, the bracelet and the clasp throughout, no cost cutting measures whatsoever. The specification is strong, AR coating, BGW9, and we've got a chronometer grade SW200-1, which is COSC chronometer certified. The only enhancements I would like to see made are the use of a screw down crown rather than push pull crown and the incorporation of female pivoted end links to improve the fit. I think they could revise the taper and make it 20 to 16 rather than 20 to 18. But these things are subjective. So I'm going to highly recommend it to you for consideration. Excellent quality and excellent value at €1,450. I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Formex Essence 39. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.